God bless you, Lord. I chose the wrong backdrop. Eh. It's all good. Father, we just bless you. We thank you. We glorify you. We magnify you. Just thank you for your warm embrace, for your touch. We thank you, Father, for knowing our name. We thank you, Father, for holding our hands while we walk. We thank you, Father, for strengthening us when we come against mountains. We thank you, Father, for being the, the water when we're thirsty for being food when we're hungry, for being the love when we're sad, and being comfort when we're anxious, when we've been embarrassed, hurt, worried. Father, just minimize me. Strip me down, and you will be illuminated right here. Take this small voice that comes out of my face and quiet it, and let your still voice be heard loud. Take my will out, let your will be done. Open my ears to hear clear. Open my family's ears to hear clear. Open our eyes to see what you want us to see before us and place coals of fire in everybody's mouth. Fire of your holiness. Fire of your glory. Fire that you put in your prophet's mouth. Fire, Father, that will cause an atmosphere to shift when a word is spoken. We bless you and we thank you. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Y'all messed me up with that song. He knows my name. Because I, I, I love that song. And, you know, I, 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 I joke, as y'all know. I joke. But a lot, it's true. A lot. Because I like laughter. I like having fun. But when Maxine sings, man, it's not Maxine. It's the sound that comes from her. It, it takes me to a time that most people don't remember in their lives when they're like one and two years old. But it takes me to a time when I was walking with my dad as a little bitty guy with a little beanie on looking up at him. I was trying to find that picture, too. It's somewhere. I'm going to find it. But it was interesting. They sung this because the Lord laid on my, my heart to deal with fathers. Because everybody, no matter what people say, has a father. Some there, some not. Some make choices that, you know, take them away. But I, it, it, it really, if you don't know, I'm, I'm a teacher, so I deal with students. And I hear a lot of things from students. And I had a conversation with a young man this week. And I said something about, uh, he was doing something. I was like, man, I'm going to call your dad. He said, man, forget that, yada, yada, yada. He said some choice words. And I said, well, man, I understand he did some things that's not lining up with what you want. But he did provide DNA for you. And because God saw fit to allow that DNA strand to be combined with the young lady to produce you, honor him. Honor him. Yeah. Even if he's doing other stuff, you still honor him because the creation component was there. Yeah. So, fathers. 
see if technology works. Ha, ah, DNA test. Maury said the. <laughs> <laughs> he took the paper. Robert Thompson. The paper says 99.9%. .9 you are the daddy. <laughs> the DNA says that you are God's children. Hallelujah. I can stop right here. I don't want to do no more. And how do I know the DNA says that? God said so. I didn't say it. You know, I'm, I have to get used to this because I don't always feel like I should be behind this because this has a lot of weight to it. That's why I always sit down here. If you ever notice, I never go up there. It's because I just, I don't know. It's, that's, that's a weighty area, and I, I don't have that much wisdom like our senior pastor. Thank you, sir. Um, but the DNA, when God created man, the DNA came from that dirt and his blowing of his holy ruach. Ruach, Hebrew word for spirit. His holy ruach, his very essence. He blew into man and DNA shifted. It started forming different components in the body. The DNA test said that he is your daddy. Genesis 1 says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Can someone tell me what the word in Hebrew for creator is? Just yell it out. Are you sure? Rock blessed. You're close. Starts with an E. Starts with an E. L. Come on. There it is. Who said that? Five points. You get 25 points because you blessed me. <laughs> she blessed me. Baruch atah. Blessed be the Lord. Amen. But Baruch is part of, Baruch is part of his name because he's a blessing. And he lays blessings upon us. And we'll get to that. She's all in with everything I'm saying. I don't know why she's doing that. But Elohim. Elohim is the creator. Creator of all things. So if he's the creator of all things, that means he's the what? Father of all things. Yes. Creator, Elohim. And that's in, the, where is it? It's the one, two, three, third word on the top, on the left. It says Aleph, Lamed, He, Yud, Mem. Elohim. All right, that was your Hebrew lesson for today. <laughs> eh, no, there's more. Amen. Isaiah 36, 63, 16 says, Who is the Father? For thou art our Father, for Abraham knoweth us not, and Israel doth not know, acknowledge us, though our Lord our, art our Father, our Redeemer from everlasting is thy name. So right here, Isaiah is saying, I, I personally don't know Abraham. There's no way possible, because Abraham was a different time frame. He's, when he says Israel does not acknowledge me, He's not re referencing this, the state of Israel. He's talking about Jacob. Because he, could he know Jacob? No, different time frame, right? But Abraham is his father through lineage. Israel is his father through lineage. But he's saying, you, oh my creator, are my father. Capital F. Notice that. Capital F. So it automatically tells us who, they're, who he's talking about. He's talking about Yahweh. He's talking about Elohim. He's talking about Yah, Yehovah, Yeshua. In there, in the red, it's hard to see. I, I said I chose the wrong thing. It has the word for father there. It says Abba. Abba. Can y'all say that? Abba. Aleph Bet Aleph. Aleph Bet He. Aleph. Has the meaning of strong, leader, powerful. Bet, if you look into the ancient pictograph, it looks like a little swirly dude. But it's considered to be the floor plan of a house. So the olive, the ox head, because the ox are strong. Put the ox before you, it leads you. The bet, the swirly dude, the, the floor plan of the house. So if 
If we take the first two letters, Ab, we have a strong house, a strong dwelling, a strong protection, a strong end. The hay is praising. The ancient Hebrew has a man and hands up. Submission. So when you have a father, you have a strong man who's a house who praises God. Means you too, women. Because <laughs> it doesn't necessarily say man in there. I just added that in. But it's saying a strong house that has praise. So in every house, there should be the praise of Yah. And if there's praise of Yah in every house, now that house becomes the beacon on the hill. And now that house on the beacon on the hill is the light of the city. And now that city is lit because the beacon of the hill is lighting everything. And now the pastor buyers who are dark and lost have a light to find your shoe. Father. Malachi 2.10 says, have we not all one father? Hath not one God created us? Why do we deal treacherously every man against his brother, profaning the covenant of our fathers? So he's questioning. He says, hey, why are we treating each other so bad? Don't we all have one daddy? Now let's, let's take it out of the, the global family and put it right into our houses. Do you, did you ever argue with your siblings? <laughs> DNA said that's your sibling. I, I did it. Me and my sisters got at it. I got in trouble several times. Got a beating once. It was my fault. But my sister tried to stand up for me until my dad said, You can get it too. <laughs> she said, Never mind. That's his, it's not mine. But we were at odds. We were fighting, but yet we had one dad. One DNA strand came from us, to us. So now we move to a greater scale. We have a country that we're in. Granted, people got to this country various ways. Some came through ships, some came on bigger ships, come, some came on land. But if you strip the color off, if you strip all the flesh off, we're all pink and red. We all have blood running through us. And we all have the DNA of our daddy, Amen. our father. So how can I justify treating someone who I think is less than me just because of the way they look or the way they speak poorly. I can't. How can I say that your language is lower than mine? How can I say that because of what you're wearing, I don't like it, and therefore it's worthless? That's happening all the way around this world. In every community on this planet, it's happening. People can say it's not. It is. A Muslim shows up in their, I can't think of what it's called, their garment. I was going to say tallit, but that's the pressure. Their, um, their garment that they're wearing, it's not a religious garment. And a lot of people don't realize it. Because if you go back into Israel in the ancient times, they're wearing the same thing. It's hot, so it's open on the bottom. But yet we do that. But yet we all have the same Abba. Some people just don't know it yet, and it's our job to let them know Amen. who their father is. Who is the father? Matthew 23, 9. And do not call anyone on earth father, for you have one father, and he is in heaven. Notice the difference between the words. One is lowercase, one is capitalized. And he's not saying you can't call your daddy father. He's saying don't call any human being creator. Do not call any human being your savior. Do not call any human being all-knowing, all-powerful, omnipresent. Do not call him anything that. Do not associate anything with my power. We got a lot to work on in this country. Got a lot to work on in other countries because there's some idols out there that we associate his power to and we start when they're little. 
and we grow up, and then we find out, and the kids get upset. The Bible says, don't cause your children anger. I'm paraphrasing. Don't, it says, fathers, do not provoke your children to anger. I got angry when I found out Santa Claus was fake. <laughs> this is true. I was upset. And how I found out didn't make any sense, because I saw Santa Claus and the elf arguing. I went downstairs. <laughs> I went downstairs and I saw my mom and dad trying to wrap gifts. And I was like, what? <laughs> That's Santa Claus and the elf eating a cookie. What's going on? <laughs> Next morning, I got up and I was, I was upset. I was like, what, what the? From Santa Claus. There's no Santa Claus. It was y'all. <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a weird person. So <laughs> I asked my dad one day, I said, how's Santa Claus getting in the house? We don't have a chimney. He said he came through the front door. <laughs> so, okay. But, so that's what I'm talking about, though, is we perpetuate certain things so we keep our kids happy. When my son has never had Santa Claus visit him, ever, I have to tell him, stop telling people. Because he'll, he'll ruin it for other kids. I'm like, their parents didn't tell him. You don't have the right to tell them. If they ask you if you believe, you just tell them, I follow Yeshua. That's all you have to say. But people always ask, why don't you tell your son about Santa Claus? Because I'm his father. I'm his dad. That's what God's saying. The adversary is, hey, yada, 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 yada. God turns around. I'm their dad. I'm their creator. I'm their father. I'm the one that made this planet. And by the way, I made you too. You're only doing what I allow you to do. And we have to understand the authority that we have because a prince has the authority of a king. And if I'm the son of Elohim, I'm walking in the shoes of my daddy. I'll let that marinate there for a while. Hey, that's a handsome young man. I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about that older guy. <laughs> Father, that's my daddy. And uh, yeah, I love that guy. We butted heads, right? And even in studying, I learned a lot about myself and how I had to get deliverance over some things. And everybody has to recognize that we all have some issue because of relationships. He could do no wrong in my sight. Because who was he? He was Superman. He couldn't be hurt. And it wasn't until I was 20, I'd say six or seven or something like that, he was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. And I saw him in his frail moments. And he said, go in and see him. I couldn't. Because that's Superman. I saw his kryptonite. But because I put him up here, we never put a man above God. Because when we see them in their frail moments, it can cause us to lose who God is. Because that's who, we, that's who I associated God with. Did he provide for me? Yes. Did he, did, when I was hurt, did I go to him? Yes. When I'm, when, does God provide for me? Yes. When I'm hurt, do I go to God? Yes. See the, see the correlation? There's a reason why he set the order up the way he did. There's a reason why the adversary is attacking homes. What is a father? And you can't see it. That's okay. Like a good teacher, State Farm is here. <laughs> I have my notes. I was trying to go through and make sure I changed everything to white, and I didn't, obviously. A father, I looked it up. What is a father according to Webster Dictionary? A male parent. Number one, male parent. I'm going to say that one more time. A male parent. Just want to make sure that's clear. Father, son. One more time. A male parent. Holy Ghost. Number two. A man who has begotten a child. Wait a minute. A man. A man. Okay, one more time. A man who has begotten a child. 
Okay, just, just, I'm doing, I didn't come up with these. This is the Webster Dictionary, just saying. An old man used as a respectful form of address. Okay. Like, we would say, pastor's our father. He's not my DNA father, but because of his, his age and his elder and his wisdom, he's my father. Amen. Amen. All right. One that originates or institutes. Hmm. One that originates or institutes. The source. So the father also is the source. Amen. But this one here. The prototype. The proto what is a prototype? I'll talk about that later. Oh, it popped up. Hey, oh, I was hitting them. Oh, you th that's heaven. <laughs> technology fell in my hands, but technology worked up there. I was wondering what y'all were looking at. <laughs> awesome. Well, there we go. <laughs> so we have this, right? Remember I was talking about DNA, and the DNA test said he is the daddy? So I was looking for a picture online that showed something that um, could put it into, take their words and put it into a picture. And it's God creating, drawing him out of the dirt. But notice, his nostrils are being filled with the Holy Spirit. The, 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 the smoke of the glory. I think last time I was up here, I talked about how the glory is in us. And I was reminded that CPR, and I never told you what CPR stood for. Not at least on a tape. CPR means Christ Power Revives. Christ Power Revives. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was God and with God. The Word dwelt here and became flesh and walked among us. The word was hung upon a tree. The word died. The word rose in three days. The word walked again among them. The word ascended into heaven. The power of the word, Christ, caused Adam to get up out the dirt. Caused life to form. He's being held by his daddy. So, source, a point of origin or a procurement. One that initiates, one that supplies information. Right? So, think about this. If your father is not there, if a child grows up without a dad, where is his point of origin? He doesn't know who he is. He's trying to find himself constantly, especially for a male. Young lady, she needs her daddy too. Because that's where she learns how to love and, who, and how a man should treat her. If he's not there, one that initiates. There's no one to initiate that love, that fatherly love there. And one that supplies information. My dad gave me some great information and some wild information. But I want that, when I talk with my son, I try and say, hey, you know, you might not like what I'm about to say, but... I have to give you this information because you live in a real world. That's right. How many of our kids globally are walking around without that volume of information? They're getting it from other people their age who have the same wisdom they have. Not the, as in Africa they say, the, the griot, the old wisdom, the library, the elders. Dad, stand up. Stand up. Prototype. An original model on which something is patterned. Wait a minute. Father is a prototype. Abba is a prototype. Okay. An individual that exhibits the essential features of a later type. The standard. The pastor is talking about the character of God. That's the standard. Genesis 1, 26, 27 says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air 
and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And God created man in his own image. In the image. This comes from out of the Hebrew, so some of it's cut off. It's in the red. You really can't see it. It's uh, Sade, Lamed, and Mim, which I'll have up here in a minute. So the word Bet Salemin Nu. Can you say that with me? Bet Salem Menu. Bet Sa Le Menu. All right? Hebrew lesson. Right? In the middle is the word, and it's dealing with the word in our image. It's a phrase. The uh, B, the Bet, is the N. Some, uh, sal- salem is image new out. All right. So we're breaking that word down to find out that you all were made in his image. Yes. Amen. So we have Sadi, Lamed, Mim. Sadi, a journey. Amen. It's also traveling, a trip. Mim, authority. And, I'm oh, sorry, Lamed, authority. Mim, blood. So, if we put it all together, when you're made in God's image, he'll take you on a journey and you'll have authority while you're walking under his blood. Every journey you go, you have authority. Every trail you walk on, he'll be teaching you. When there's a hunt for you, you can bind it up because you will have his might. Those are all the meanings of those various letters. His image. Jesus says unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me? Philip, he that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, you show us the Father? He's saying, people say that nobody in the Bible has ever seen God. As a good lawyer, I just proved it. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Because I'm in his image. I am the image of who he is. And likeness. Totality. Everything. Y'all were made in his image. His image. If we are made in Yahweh's image, then should we look like him? Some questions that we need to think about. Should we look like him? What does it mean to look like God? Because he's spirit, so what does that mean? People will know you by the way you live your life. What you do. When I go, when I pass away, when I pass on, and my body returns to the dust, there will be something that's still there. And it's the memory of who I am. And people will remember that. Will that cause them to think about our creator? Amen. Or will it cause them to think about the devilish acts I did? I did them. So now I got to do a whole lot to cut, get rid of that. I was a little young guy doing foolery. All right. I still do some foolery. <laughs> and how should I act? Just like him, exactly. How should I act? Now, sometimes we try and figure out, we're living in this modern world, and we're trying to use an ancient book to guide us. So that's when the paraclete shares some information with you. The Holy Spirit will download information to you. He'll show you, well, right here, son, it says burn goats. You live in America. Yes. You live in a neighborhood. Yes. You live on one acre of land, yes. Can you burn a goat in your neighborhood? Not unless I'm cooking it. Then I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about your praise and your worship to me because the Messiah already came. But see, you got to have that conversation. We can talk to God like that. But we have an idea that we have to be, oh, Lord, help me, please. Don't just talk. The, The relationship we have with our dads We'll build the relationship we have with God. Amen. Amen. 
fathers, if we cannot have a conversation with our daughters and our sons, they will never have a conversation with our creator. Mothers, if you never have a conversation with our daughters and our sons, they will never have a conversation with our creator. Remember, he said, I'm making them in my image, male and what? Female. Because they need both components. A car has an airbag in it, right? The car is a hard metal shell that protects you. You take all the safety stuff out of it, and you get into an accident, all you do is become a ping pong in this metal cage. If a woman is not there, then she's, the son or the daughter is dealing with this harsh, rigid man constantly. But here comes the buffer. Hey, oh, hey, hey, baby, it's okay. Airbag. Hey, hey, baby, it's okay. Seatbelt. See, without that, the car becomes a very dangerous tool. Without mom, the husband can become a very dangerous tool. Without the car, the seatbelt, the airbag, is useless. Without dad, not saying that moms aren't useless, but it's a harder job. It's harder because they have to fulfill a component that they're not made for. What does it mean to act like Yahweh? Help the needy. Help those that are in, in, uh, in turmoil. Walk a right walk. Make the right decisions. Does that mean we do it all the time? No, he knows with us. We're human. We live this human experience. I trip all the time. But the thing is, we got to recognize where we trip, get up, dust ourselves off. Lord, forgive me for that trip. I, I tripped on pastor's feet. Forgive me, pastor, for scuffing your shoes. Get it right, get back on track, and let's roll. Did God ever repent? He repented to Moses. He said, man, I, I, I repent for the, I, these people that I made. I'm going to wipe them all out and just start with you, Moses. <laughs> Moses said, ah, don't do that. I'm jacked up. <laughs> I'm messed up. You brought these people out. How would, it, how, would, how would things be in this world if you brought them out of Egypt just to kill them? Everybody wouldn't follow you. See the conversation he had? A real conversation. My son, can, he can check me sometime, but it's how he does it. It's how I teach my students. I say, if you have a teacher that's wrong, you don't go up there and blast them. You say, excuse me, Mr. Um, so-and-so, Mr. So-and-so, I was doing this problem, and can you check see if I did it right? But by golly gee, you did. I did it wrong. Then you get props in front of the class, and nobody gets hurt. Everybody gets blessed. Hey, it's a prototype. Pop on the left, dad on the middle, and son on the right. I was really trying to find a picture where all of us look the same. And there is one out there. <laughs> when I, at a certain age, I, my son looked just like me. And I looked just like my dad. The prototype. You all can find it in yours. That guy in the middle, he's a, he's a, that's a bad dude. <laughs> That dude's up to something right there. <laughs> but the thing is, we have to recognize that God made us to produce an image behind us. So if he made us that way and he said we are in his image, then therefore, if I go far enough back, some of my traits in my son will show up in Adam. And some of the traits in your grandchildren will show up in Adam. And some of your, 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 the traits in your cousins and all these people around this world will show up in Adam, and he got those traits from who? The test said, Yahweh, you're the father. <laughs> Should we look like Yahweh? The spirit, we talked about that, right? How are we going to look like him? It's how we walk, how we talk, how we deal with people. Amen. All right? He has character. We learn his Torah. We apply his Torah. We apply it through the Spirit. Because if you do not apply his Torah through the Spirit, all you're doing is walking in legalism. It just becomes a checklist, do's and don'ts. Where is Yahweh? Where is Yeshua? Yahweh has love for his children, right? Now the earth was, unf was unformed and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters. 
he was there hovering over everything. And he said, you know what? I'm making a playground for my kids. And he gave us a great big playground called Earth. And I love it. Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You will worship what you do, not now, I mean, not know. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. What he's saying here is this. There's going to be a time where Jerusalem will not be your place of worship. There's going to be a time where the mountains where the Samaritans are is not going to be their place of worship because this came from when they split. When the nation split after Solomon, you had the northern tribes and southern tribes. Then you had the Samaritans who were blended. They were in one section, and Judeans in another section, fighting. Brothers and sisters fighting. Have one dad, fighting. But he's saying, all of that don't mean a hill of beans, because you're going to be worshiping from here. All right. There's no longer a temple. There's no longer a mishkan. There's no longer a tabernacle. I'm looking at it, woman, it's you. There's going to be a time we all worship where we are because we're spread out all over the place. Right now, the little country of Israel cannot handle the population of this world. If you've never been there, from the north to the tip, it takes you about an hour. Virginia is bigger. It can't hold us all. But the hour is coming, and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in what? Yeshua and his walk. If you don't walk in those, you're missing something. Our brothers, um, our Jewish brothers, Ashkenazi and Sephardim, they're walking in what? The truth, but they need the spirit. Our brothers on the side in the Christianity, they're walking in the spirit, but we need some truth. That's right. yeah. So what you got is you got this. You got a piece of bread, a piece of bread, you got some jelly and some peanut butter that never meet. Right. Amen. And a peanut butter sandwich and a jelly sandwich ain't too good. But when you put them together, right. you got a PB and J. So when you walk in the truth and in the spirit, you walk with ultimate power because now you're walking in his image. Now you're walking true in his steps. You're walking exactly on how he wants you to walk. Come on, y'all, let's make a PB&J sandwich. No, I'm being for real. I'm hungry. <laughs> Yahweh has character. The character of Yah is encased in those five books of Moses. What is that called? The Torah. Torah. It means the law. No. I tricked y'all. Instructions. <laughs> all right. Teachings and instructions. All right, that the, we all know that the law comes from the word nomos, from the Greek. Now, law does mean law. It means do's and don'ts. And the teachers and instructions are do's and don'ts, but it's how you apply it. Did Yeshua get rid of those books? Nope. He surely didn't. He said, I did not come to destroy it, but to fulfill it, which means to rightly interpret and show you how to walk this out. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray to the Father, and he will give you another helper, the Ruach, that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, the world cannot receive it, because it neither sees him nor knows him. The world cannot receive it because I haven't got there yet. They're having a problem in Egypt when Robert hasn't shown up yet. Why hasn't Robert shown up? Because I'm too busy doing Robert. They haven't seen it over here in Chesterfield. Why? Because Robert hasn't gone yet. Not saying that I'm the one to do it, but maybe God told me and I'm over too busy worrying about myself. All of us have a task. If we don't know it, that means we need to tune in. We got too much static. Static's called life, events, the human experience. Sometimes you got to get in that quiet space and turn it down. Tune into him. Yes. You learn the language by listening to the language, by interacting with the language, learning the, the vocabulary of the language. 
how are we going to learn God? Interacting with the language, the Bible. Read the Bible, study the Bible, wait for the Spirit of God to move. Give him time. Open up a period of time for him that's not bound by your clock. That's the problem. We got these things called watches and cell phones that tell us time. And we can put God in that box of clocks when he's not in the box of clocks. Something we got to think about. He loves you. Before you accept Yeshua into your life, why did Yeshua say you're not orphans? Oh, I did not even go over that scripture. Sorry. I was wondering why it looked a little weird. The bottom part. Because it neither sees him nor him, but you know him, he who dwells with you and will be in you, I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. So the question that I was asking is, why did he say that you're not orphans? What is an orphan? We all have these ideas of what orphanages look like. You know, wayward kids, kids that are hurt, issues, they don't have enough food, they're malnourished, all these things. But what if I say every one of us was an orphan at one point? Who's your daddy? A person who is deprived of one or both parents because of death, a young animal that has lost its mother, one deprived of some protection. What was a father in Hebrew? Abba. Strong protection, a home. Pull dad out of it. Where is that strong protection? Take God away from you. Where is that strong protection? You're an orphan. So until we come to Yeshua, we're orphans. And we all have an orphan heart. We've all been hurt. We all have a warped idea of how to re re relate to God. My relationship with my father, my, my heavenly father, not my heavenly father, my earthly father, was a great relationship at times. There were times where we didn't meet eye to eye. There were times where there were things introduced between our relationship that caused me to look at him like he's worthless to me. So what did that do for me in terms of my God? I grew up in the church, but I didn't care. Why would I go? If the guy right here is treating me this way, why would I go here? Yeah, he, he, if I'm hurt, I can go to him, and he mends me. If I go to a doctor and they say, well, son, you got a broken leg, I go to my dad's next. Pop, do I really have a broken leg? But there were still those times. Yeah, he was good, and he was this, but then there was times where as a kid, it grained, it, it just, that image was there. What are we doing to our children? He doth execute justice for the fatherless and the widows and love the stranger in giving him food and uh, raiment. <coughs> Taking care of the orphans is our duty because they're missing God. They're missing him. But who's an orphan? The way we're kids. No, everybody walking out there on the street is an orphan. And they need a home. And the home is in heaven. Walking right here, the temple's walking right here is part of their home. You shall not afflict any widow or father's child if thou afflict them in any wise. For if they cry out unto me, I will surely hear their cry. My wrath shall wax hot, and I will kill you with the sword, and your wives shall be widows and your children fatherless. If I don't do what I'm supposed to do to help the orphans, what's going to happen to my son? Just put it in, the, in, your, in your playing field. We've got to think about some things. How are we going to do this? Matthew says, now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with, with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to marry your wife, for that which is conceived in her is the Holy Spirit, and she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. He will be called Yeshua, salvation. If, jo if Joseph would have never followed the commandment to take care of an orphan, our Messiah would have a warped view of his God. 
Yeshua did not have a, a physical father on earth. Amen. So according to all definitions, he is an orphan. He is fatherless. Because there was no chromosome from the earthly dad. He didn't have all the chromosomes. He had one chromosome from the male, and that was from the Holy Spirit. And Joshua had to be checked. And notice it said that he thought about it. That meant he was like, man, this woman done cheated on me. I'm about to get rid of this woman. I'm about to take her to the council. She's going to drink that nasty drink where they got all the stuff off the floor of the temple, and they make her sick, and it's going to prove that she cheated. She was sitting, he was pondering on this thing. The angel had to come quick. Hey, boy. Hey, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is a God, because it would have jacked some stuff up. Yeah. We wouldn't be where we are. We'd still be in a state of sin. Yeah. Orphans, we got to show the love of Yahweh. Amen. Did Yahweh create the earth? Yes. He created you a playing field. He loved you. He wanted to give you a playground. Did Yahweh create Adam and Eve? Yes, he wanted to put some people here. Yeah. Did Yahweh save Noah? Yes, because he loved us so much that he still wanted us here. Did Yahweh save Israel? Yes. He sent Joseph into captivity so Israel could be saved. Every deliverer of Israel went to Egypt. Every single one of them. Joseph left Israel. Where'd he go? Egypt. I think it is. Pastor said, is that Egypt, Africa? It is Egypt, Africa, Africa, not Middle East. Had that conversation some other day. <laughs> Moses. Moses left his mother, Israel, and went where? Pharaoh's daughter, Egypt. Yeshua. At around three years old, angels say, get that boy to Egypt. Get him out of Israel. Get him out of Judea. Because the king is putting out something to kill these boys. See, the, the king, he had a, a flashback to Egypt. Kill the boys because the deliverer is coming. Oh, wait a minute. Didn't they do that in Egypt? Yeah, yeah. Kill the boys. Get them out of here. So he came back from hiding. Every deliverer went to Egypt. Are you willing to get out of Egypt? And I'm not Egypt like America's Egypt. No. Are you willing to get out of the life that we're living in to get into a, Israel? which represents walking in the kingdom of heaven Amen. so that you can cause change in other people's lives. Because we're like little deliverers. Amen. What is a deliverer? One who delivers something. Amen. What are you going to deliver? A baby? No, the word of God. Amen. Did Yahweh protect Daniel in the, in the lion's den? Yes. Subdue those lions. He was over there hugged up. Well, just like a big cushy teddy bear. Did Yahweh honor Joshua? Even in his slaughtering of a people, he honored him. He said, Lord, I love it. Stop the sun. And the Lord said, okay. And they kept whooping. He honored him because of the love that he had for him. So we have to look at what we are doing. The image we create is the image people see. If we're walking in his image, then what image are we showing people? The natural fathers, your children see Yahweh through you. Amen. If I treat my son wrong, he's going to think God's going to treat him wrong. Yeah. Spiritual fathers, your spiritual children see Yahweh through you. Amen. If spiritual fathers treat the children wrong, they're going to see Yahweh wrong. Natural mothers, your children see Yahweh through you. If you don't nourish your children, they won't know what love is. Spiritual mothers, your children see Yahweh through you. If you don't, show them who God is through your life. They will never get it unless God has to intervene because he knows what's in their future. And I'd rather not have God intervene. Because if he has to intervene into your child's life, what does that say for you when you get before him? 
Are you willing to get it right? Because this is part of it. Many days I got to sit there and say, Ethan, come here, boy. Let me sit down and talk with you. I got to repent. I'm sorry. If I ask him right now, hey, boy, am I a good dad? He said, yeah, you're a good dad. I got, boy, I love you, but I got to say I'm sorry. Why, dad? Because I'm just a good dad. I'm sorry for being a good dad. He's not here right now because he's somewhere else, but I know he, he's probably seeing this. So I say to him, Ethan, I'm sorry for being just a good dad. I need to strive to be a great dad. Amen. 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 Same thing, his mom talks to him. She says the same thing. Ethan, you know, I'm sorry for being just a good mom. I need to be a greater mom. Amen. That shows the vulnerability of who we are. Amen. And it shows a child that we care. Amen. Remember I said God repented to Moses? He was like, I'm done with these people. That's right. Why did I, I brought them out of here? That was showing vulnerability. But Moses had a relationship where he can talk to him and say, but it's okay. Don't destroy them. And then he used his own words against them. Ethan does that to me. But that's the relationship I want. I couldn't do that with my dad until he got older. And my father sat down with me. I think Ethan might have been like five. He sat down and he said, boy, they called me boy. Boy, I need to have a talk with you. I'm like, oh, what do I do? He said, I want to tell you something. We lived a good life. and I've done some horrible things. But I want to tell you I'm sorry. I'm sorry because I, I did what I knew to do. But now I know what I should have done. Are we willing as adults to take that whooping? I'm sorry. It's a big word. It's a big word. That's why God wants us to repent. Because it, what it does is we have a bottle. And as we do stuff, we pour water out until it's empty. But when you repent, the bottles turn back up, and the living water can fill it. And then when you get it right with the people, the top is tied up. So now the water doesn't come back out until you do something stupid, which will probably be soon. But we can always go back. And that moment right there, it wiped out all the foolishness through 27, 28, 30 years of my life of me and my dad going like this. All of a sudden, this became this. So when you saw that, that kissing hug on the forehead there, that was after. Yeah, I loved my dad. Yeah, he was great. He was like Superman. But like I said, kids have great memories. You all can remember to one point or another where somebody did you wrong, and that was a parent. Did they ever bless you? Did they ever come back to you? Because he did do that. He said, I'm sorry. And he said, I want to bless you. Never done in his life. Broke me up. God wants to bless you. He wants to just lay his hands on you. Sometimes a mother must repent. Come and join with your father. I have, I have three sisters. I grew up with two. One I didn't. I love her. I love her. But after learning this, there's a portion of her life she missed out on because she grew up in Mississippi while we were bouncing from state to state. And she might be watching. She says, I watch you all the time. I say to her, I stand here in the shoes of my father, your dad, and I repent to you. I say, I'm sorry for not being there for you. Mind you, I'm standing in the shoes of dad. I bless you with life, with health, and strength. I bless you that everything you do becomes gold. I bless you that all of your offspring become successful. 
And may the glory of God reign in your house. And as a son, I'm the youngest. It's my job to bless my sister. So when I see the other two, because they're here, I have to do that. Because I got to stand in that position for my dad. And as a minister here, I have to do that for the young men, young ladies. So in close, hopefully you got something today. But I offer this, this moment to you. If you have never had a blessing bestowed upon you by mom or dad, I don't care the age. You could be 193 years old. I'm giving you a direct order as me. As my dad said, carry your hind parts up here. <laughs> That's what you say. Get your hind parts out of here. Bring your hind parts up here so that you can get a blessing. And every time you see Pastor, every time you see Pastor Donnie, every time you see Pastor Barry, Every time you see Elder Burt, every time you see me, every time you see somebody, I need a blessing. Amen. Can you please bless me? If Ethan does it to me, I'll be working on something dead. <laughs> Ethan, what? I need a blessing. <laughs> Before he goes to bed, I'm working on something for school. What? I'm working. Can you bless me before I go to sleep? When you get in the car and we go to school, drop him off. I'm driving, fussing, fussing. Why, boy, why don't you have your gym shorts? Howdy, howdy. Dad, can you bless me? Ah, father. Because <laughs> that's, I took that literally growing up here. We were married here. My son's been here all his life. And they said, bless your kids. Even when he was in a womb, I did that. And what you see is not me. Amen. What you see is God in that little boy. Hallelujah. Because if it was just me, I'd be, he'd be screwed up like I am. <laughs> so, yeah, I've, gotten, I've, gotten, <laughs> I've gotten corrected enough to get my act together. Amen. Right now, Pastor, could you come? If you need a blessing because the hand has not been laid upon you by your parents, by your grandparents, by somebody, and you would like a blessing, come forth. You can go to pastor, you can go to me, I don't care. Because it's not us doing the blessing. It's our creator blessing. Is, uh, did Pastor Donnie leave? Yes, please. They need to come out. The kids need to come out because they need to be blessed. Get him out here. Yeah, Elder Burke, come up here so you can bless folk. Because we need.